third story tonight. These are the quiet times for my next guest. Bill Maher will be appearing at the Civic Center in Peoria, Illinois on December 3rd. And you can spare us both the Will It Play in Peoria jokes. And it's the Star Plaza Theater in Merrillville, Indiana on December 4th. On the 10th, the Brady Theater in Tulsa and the Silver Legacy in Reno on December 11th. Third Peoria, 4th Merrillville, 10th Tulsa, 11th Reno. Mr. Marr has survived another first half of a season on the television from fake joints smoked to that little reminder that it's always worth it to keep the tapes of those old, old shows of yours because you never know what parts may be useful later on. Much, much later on. The battle that is real time with Bill Maher begins anew on HBO on January 14th. But right now, Bill Maher is here, and I welcome him with the reminder that not only are the tapes of the old Christine O'Donnell interviews useful, but so are tapes of old Robert Klein interviews from 1977. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Keith, what a, what a yeoman you are to do all those plugs for me. Thank you. That's only the first and second times. We'll get to the third set of plugs later on in the show. Christine O'Donnell's a wonderful <laughs> place to start. Do you take any comfort in the yeah. fact that America did not elect her or Angle in Nevada or, in fact, did not elect a majority of the Tea Partiers? Well, I'm a cockeyed optimist, Keith, so of course I take a lot of comfort in that. Uh, yes, I think America did draw a line. Um, and when the nuts started falling out of the nut bag this year, they said, yeah, even us, the electorate of America, the crack baby that we are, is going to say enough is enough. They did it, by the way, also, I think, with campaign ads. You can say almost anything in a campaign ad, but they did not like Alan Grayson calling his opponent Taliban Dan. Yep. Uh, they didn't like the Aqua Buddha uh, yeah. <laughs> of Rand Paul's uh, opponent. But, um, yeah, I, th I thought you mentioned Sharon Angle. I thought that was a good race to, to kind of be the epitome for what was going on in America. Because here you had Harry Reid, who, of course, we all know is very uninspiring, dusty, old Harry Reid. He looks like the druggist in a Frank Capra movie. <laughs> but you know what? He was a guy who got a lot done in the mm -hmm. Senate, as opposed to the crazy lady with 20 dead cats in the basement. That was the choice, <laughs> and it was that close. So, yeah, I take some comfort, but not a lot. But how, Bill, how are Republicans getting away with spinning November 2nd as this landslide? I mean, they have done a wonderful job of convincing their own people that they swept the Democrats out. They didn't even take the Senate under what, you know, probably were the most uh, adverse circumstances Democrats could have created for themselves. Yes, but they didn't take the Senate because they had people like Christine O'Donnell, mm -hmm. as, as you well know and have pointed out. Uh, if it wasn't for those crazy teabaggers in a couple of races, they would have. I mean, uh, let's not kid ourselves. It was a gigantic victory for the Republicans, uh, but they shouldn't kid themselves either. People weren't really voting for them. People were just voting against the Democrats. I think I saw a poll right before the election that said congressional Republicans, their disapproval rating was like 63 percent. Mm -hmm. And, Republi and Democrat disapproval was like 60%. Only Democrats <laughs> can lose in a popularity contest to someone less popular than they are. Well, that, that, uh, but yeah, I, I don't, yeah. That takes us back to the White House. When you heard the president say uh, yesterday that he wants to work harder at bipartisanship in the next two years, were you as encouraged as I was? <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I don't understand why he sticks with that. You, you know, I, I, I have not doubted him up until this last season, post-election, mm -hmm. when he did not seem to get mad, he seemed to be beaten. He looked like Johnny Fontaine in The Godfather, when The <laughs> Godfather has to say, you can act like a man. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, bipartisanship, I think, is one of those things that is so highly overrated. It's one of those things when a pollster asks people, what's the problem in Washington? Do you think there should be more bipartisanship? Oh, of course there should. I don't think people care. I think people want people to get something done. Uh, especially the people who voted for Barack Obama. We would like to see something get done. I, mm -hmm. I thought at this point in his tenure, I would be making jokes about our first black president and what a gangster he is, you know, and yeah. how he's... Instead, we got like another in a long line of those Democrats like Al Gore and Dukakis who just look wimpy. You know, he, he looks like 
when they asked Dukakis, you know, what would you do if someone raped your wife? And he said, well, I would put out a five-point plan <laughs> or whatever he said. Yeah. Um, you just said you had not given up on him. Do you think the president still has greatness in him? And that comes with a corollary question, which would be, if he does have greatness in him, is he ever going to share that greatness with the rest of us? <laughs> yes, I, th I, th I think he's, a, you know, highly intelligent. And, of course, we don't know everything he knows mm -hmm. and what he has to deal with. Uh, I, I don't think the lack of greatness is in what he wants to do and where he wants to move the country. And actually, uh, as we do know, although it's not widely reported in the mainstream media, this was one of the most successful mm -hmm. Congresses in like 40 years, probably since LBJ. The problem is they don't tell people about it. I was watching this, uh, you know, 60 Minutes has done a couple of uh, pieces in the last month or so about uh, the recession and how it's affecting people. And I saw this woman literally in tears uh, telling Scott Pelley, I think it was, that, you know, she just doesn't know if she can afford to keep her kid in college with the tears coming down. And I thought, you know, instead of crying, read, find out. There actually is one party yeah. that has been addressing that issue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just, oh, they all don't do anything in Washington. One side is trying a little harder than the other. Um, uh, to, to, to that point, um, is the following a fair statement, do you think, and if so, why, would it, why is it true or, or not true, that Republicans and conservatives are actually better at getting done what they want to get done or what they were elected to get done, whether or not it's good or bad for the country, that they're better at it than Democrats are? Way better. Yeah. Way better. Democrats used to be good at it. I mean, if you look at all the uh, ways in which they moved the country forward from the New Deal onward, uh, civil rights and uh, Social Security and Medicare, all those programs, and by the way, implemented quickly. You know, 11 months after, I think it was, uh, they passed me uh, Medicare, people were enjoying the benefits as opposed to what we do now, we'll kick it down the road to 2018 or whenever this stuff starts. Uh, but yes, they because they kept their people in line and they and they knew how to twist arms and and do those things that uh, FDR and LBJ used to be good at. Uh, but we don't have Democrats like that anymore. So what we have is, you know, one side which, as you know, you and I I think are on the same page with this. There is the false equivalency is a sin mm -hmm. in this country to pretend that both sides have moderates. They don't. Yep. There are no moderates on the Republican side. There are no Republican senators who who will argue uh, that global warming is a hoax anymore. Yeah. For example, um, you know, at some point that the the left moved to the center, the right moved into a mental hospital. <laughs> Uh, and there is no middle anymore. The, the right keeps, the Republicans keep staking out turf further and further to the right and then demand that the Democrats meet them in the middle, except that it's not the middle anymore. That's why health care is so watered down, because yep. it's really Bob Dole's old Republican plan from 1994. But somehow that got to be the middle now. Yeah, the, Same thing with cap and trade. Right. The, the middle is the near right. Uh, you mentioned false equivalents. I'm, I'm yeah. not, not fishing for either uh, compliments nor reassurance here, but I, I don't know that th I've ever heard this from you at any length. Give me your assessment of television news and its effect on American politics today. Well, gee, you could write a whole book on that. Uh, I mean, since people have stopped reading yeah. <laughs> in general, for good or bad, we're stuck with it. That's how people get their news. Um, uh, I think you mentioned Christine O'Donnell there at the top. I think I read that that was the most reported story mm -hmm. of the entire midterm elections was Christine O'Donnell. <laughs> yep. That's pretty sad. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the, the place where you go, where I go for in-depth coverage is uh, opinion news. And when I say opinion news, people like you and Rachel and Lawrence O'Donnell and Chris Matthews, you know, they ha you guys have the time to really go into depth on an issue. Um, so I think that does perform a service as long as you stick to the facts. You guys care about the facts. I know the conservatives would disagree, mm -hmm. but the truth is, and here's the false equivalency part, one side in our great national debate just makes crap up. <laughs> 
as yeah. you well know. Yep. I mean, when I covered this issue on our show, and you know, we are a little incestuous let's, lately, let's be honest, in, in our opinion, news, comedy, whatever it is business we're in, because there was John Stewart's thing, and then you comment, and then I took your side in that, and then John said something about me, and I said something about Rachel about him, and you know, it's all gotten a little crazy. <laughs> But basically what I was saying was, you were right about that. Uh, you and Glenn Beck are not the same. One of you, you, tries to stick to the facts. The other one is very close to playing with his poop. And beautifully <laughs> phrased that was. Uh, Bill Maher, Peoria on the 3rd, Merrillville on the 4th, Tulsa on the 10th, Reno on the 11th, attend all four, and you get a free package of Pop-Tarts and Spam. Uh, Bill, uh, great thanks. I hope to see you in the new year in your place. Okay, you will. Okay. Thank you. And we're all set. Thanks, Bill.